Eso me va. Hi, Marco, can you hear me? Hello, I can hear you. Okay, Marco. Nice to hear you again. Now you have the permission. Yes, yes, yes exactly. That, that's so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I trust that, you know, everything will be... Decent. <laughs> oh, okay. Marco, Hello, now you. Hi, Marco. Hi. Um, How are yeah, you? I'm, uh, I'm on two sessions at the same time, so. Okay, so it's a little bit crazy for you. Yeah, but if you, I, I, I can hear you. You can hear me. Yes, no problem. I think Stefan is already one of the speakers, am I right? Okay. Exactly. Perfect. Good. And I think Diana Rapitani will also join. Yeah, I think it would be like a lecture, no? So everybody can just jump in if they want it, no? Yeah. So Oh, wow, this, this is very odd because I, I have somebody speaking here. And I'm no here. problem. <laughs> Stephen, can you take your presentation if you want? Okay, perfect. Um, Sorry? No, it's, I was talking with Stephen, not with you. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Let me... Okay, let me switch the presentation now. Okay, we can see it. Okay, in presentation mode or? Mm -hmm.
Okay, it works. Okay, perfect. Should I stop it or? Yes, you can stop sharing. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah, that must be, I mean, maybe the, yeah, yeah, maybe. I must say that, that's, that, that probably this demo session is the one a bit more complicated because, you know, you have these multiple sessions and, you know, mm. Uh, oh. Yeah, I think uh, we can admit because uh, Gamal and uh, others, I think we can start admitting everybody in a way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we have the presenter and the uh, I know here, do we, do we have the presenters here? We have Stefan. Tobias, you also are a presenter? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Very good. Welcome. Uh, uh, if you... If you guys want to do any test, I mean, the idea is that you can share your screen and you can show whatever you want. So, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not sure if, if, you, if you have anything to check before we start, you know, that's the moment. <laughs> no. Or otherwise just, um, you know, it, it's really like, a, like an online lecture. You can show your screen and uh, that's it. We have one speaker not here yet, I think. Let me uh, Okay. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, the, the, yeah the, that's a good thing. I have to mute and unmute. Then I try to share my screen and let me see if it works. Yes, can you take it? Can you see my screen? 
Yes. Yes, I can see it. Hello, um, so we are still, uh, so the, uh, let me clarify a bit the settings here, because the idea is each, each session is for 20 minutes, so you have, uh, we told you guys to have, you know, 10 minutes for a presentation and five minutes uh, per, for questions plus five minutes for allowing people to change uh, rooms if they need it probably five minutes in uh, between it's a lot of time so you know if you need a, a couple of more minutes will not be a problem and uh, then it's uh, it's really up to you to decide uh, how to do it i mean uh, if you have a presentation you can go through the presentation and uh, stop for questions in the end but you can also keep it interactive uh, you know you can think you have uh, 15 minutes to show your tool and use these uh, 15 minutes in what you think is the most effective way. We are, we can be very flexible, all right? And And uh, oh, oops. and for
So welcome to this session. And um, I'm, uh, well, I'm Marco, one of the chairs of uh, the um, demo and the resources session. And uh, I mean, uh, let me show, um, let me share my screen with you just for one second. Uh, so we are in session four, so we have uh, two two demos only in um, in uh, uh, this session: interactive process clustering with the TN, uh, TSNE and the tool to recommend compliant business processes based on the process adaptation. And this will be repeated in this order twice now and uh, starting from uh, one hour uh, from now. Um, I will stop sharing my screen. And um, one thing that I want to mention for the for who is attending this session is that here yeah, I published on the on the chat the links to the five um, the five Zoom meetings of uh, the of this demo session. So uh, if you want to switch between sessions once you have seen what you wanted to see, you don't have to go to the app or to the website or also you can just click here to find the, the session that you need. Okay, so um, I will. Uh, uh, the first speaker is uh, Stefan or uh, Tobias. I forgot. Uh, Stefan. Stefan. Right? Yeah, he's uh, shaking his head. So I will leave the floor to uh, Stefan. The idea is um, uh, we have um, 15 minutes for uh, each demo and uh, you know uh, 10 minutes of presentation plus uh, uh, five minutes of questions but we know that often demos you know are can be very interactive so you know feel free to to organize uh, these as you want and also for uh, the participants uh, feel free to ask questions at any time on the chat or raising hands and so on. all right so stefan the floor is yours Perfect, thank you. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, can you see it? Perfect. Then welcome to our session on interactive process clustering with TVs and E. My name is Stefan Schumann and I'm a researcher at the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. Today, I want to present work which was done together with Jana Repekarese, Sebastian Baumann, and Peter Fetke. We have developed a demonstration unit which mainly focuses on process analysts and process uh, specialists without deeper data science knowledge to give them the ability to do process clustering in an interactive and visual way. Ah, sorry. Okay. Uh, first, I want to talk about the motivation behind this idea, um, then go over the demonstration unit, the clustering process, as well as the user interface, and then conclude finally. So, why do process clustering at all? If you are doing process discovery on a real life event log, this often creates spaghetti models, which um, are produced by those um, complex, really complex. Um, event logs with lots of deviations and lots of variations in the processes. And one way to get easier models which describe the event log well is process clustering. Here we can select smaller parts of this big event log with event traces which are more or less the same and can create a um, lot simpler um, process models. And we wanted to provide process analysts and specialists with an easy to use tool for clustering where you don't need to, um, um, where you can really um, interactively um, do such clustering tasks. Um, especially um, we focused on the interactivity of the grouping of traces. So um, it is not like a, a clustering process where you do the clustering completely and then a process mining, it's more or less an iterative part we select um, smaller chunks of the event log and can generate um, process models from them. Um, we've also integrated process discovery algorithms. So um, we have set up an end-to-end -end pipeline from process clustering to process discovery in one tool and you don't need anything to, to um, do the discovery then in another tool. 
So um, to focus on our um, target audience, um, we came up with some characteristics which the tool needs to fit. So um, first, it should be an easy to access tool. The operator should not deal with any complex installation process or any server software. So um, we have built it as a web tool uh, where the operator just can browse to and upload their event log. It should feature a simple to use graphical interface, uh, which you can see on the right side, for example, the file upload dialog. Um, there is nothing else, it just features um, this, this clustering pipeline from beginning to end and the user is not distracted with um, too much more operations of complex settings. And also our users should be able to evaluate the quality of the generated process model collection. So we um, took this in mind to build up some, some metric how the user can identify if, if the models generated are good or not so good. Before I'm talking about the clustering process, I want to shortly talk about um, grouping based on T's and E. T's and E is a popular method to explore high dimensional data in lower dimensions. Um, for example, you can see on the right side such a T's and E clustering in a 2D scatter plot. This is actually a screenshot of our tool uh, where the processes are grouped together in such clusters. Um, we use T's and E to um, represent a high dimensional similarity matrix into a 2D um, projection. So um, the similarities of the process traces are projected in an easy understandable dimension and which you can really interact with. Um, the idea behind this is that the similar vectors um, are um, really close in projection. So what is um, here in such clusters are mostly um, um, processes which um, are more or less the same. And um, one other um, nice thing about uh, this 2D projection is that we are really easily able to um, interact with such uh, a graph or a plot. <clears throat> so, our tool features a pipeline which is divided into five steps. Um, we, um, uh, the user just needs to upload a process log. Here we support the XS format, which makes us a lot, of, a lot easier so the user doesn't have to deal with any mapping of the values or so on. And um, the next step is then we are creating a trace similarity matrix out of this process log. Um, here the user can choose between um, three different um, similarity metrics. And um, these are changing a bit the clustering result later on. Um, we can talk about this in the discussion then. Uh, next, we are going to apply the T's and E algorithms to um, reduce this um, trace similarity matrix into the 2D scatter plot. The next two steps are the more interactive parts. So the user is able to um, select smaller parts of um, these process clusters and generate process models out of them. Um, this is done in multiple iterations, so um, it's really interactive. Um, the next part then is um, to determine if the, the generated process models are a good fit for, um, for reassembling the event log. And here we implemented a similarity metrics to show the similarity between the generated processes. Talking about the similarity metrics, um, here we have um, a view of the main screen of our application. Um, the similarity metrics is implemented or is, is shown on the right side of the interface. Um, here, um, red boxes um, show a high similarity between the processes and usually this is a good sign that we can combine those processes because this doesn't add too much complexity to them but um, we can reassemble the complete event log without too many processes. In the middle we see our um, TS and E scatter plot where we can select um, different parts of the, the clusters. Um, here the red one is selected, the other ones are a bit more translucent so you really can um, go through the interface by clicking and selecting um, different subparts. The left side is for the process log um, interaction where you set the similarity metrics and um, also have access to the process mining tools. Um, down below, we see the process model table where all generated process models are listed. Um, from here, we also can view 
uh, the generated um, process models. Uh, what you can see here, um, at the moment, this is just an image view, but we plan to do this a bit more interactively so we can zoom in and view also bigger or larger process models easier. At the moment, they are um, really small, so you can't see everything in them. Um, to conclude, um, we have built this demonstration unit to evaluate the usability of T's and E for process clustering. We have implemented an end-to-end -end pipeline from process clustering to um, process mining or generating process models with process discovery algorithms. And we have used this tool for an evaluation in our department and the evaluation was quite good. So um, we plan um, to also evaluate it with process specialists and process analysts later on. Thank you. Um, I'm open for discussion and questions. Um, if you want to test our tool, uh, you can scan the QR code on the right hand side and try it with some XAS logs. Uh, we also have linked some XAS logs in our publication, so feel free to try them. You can also contact me under uh, my email address. Thank you. Thank you. Are there, are there any questions? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I think it's catch. No. Uh... Yeah, it's catch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hi. Okay, so hi Marco, hi Stefan. Um, so thank thanks for the presentation. I also watched your video and I like it very much, both of them. And um, I also think you did very well because your presentation kind of filled in some questions that I already <laughs> had written down while you're watching your video. So uh, that was very nice the way that you approach your, um, your tool. So I was just wondering, so the, the example that you showed in, in the video was a very nice log, let's say. Uh, uh, very nice behavior that you could really see um, very defined clusters, right? Usually real, uh, real data, it's, it's harder to really see these very defined clusters. So I was just wondering, you, you ran in all the logs, uh, did you have this situation that you have a lot of intersections and you can see the clusters more close together and if yes uh how did how did the tool behavior so it was the the models that you found later on were also clear or maybe in, already in a spaghetti uh, structure so i was wondering thank you for your feedback and for your question Yes, actually, we did also tested some other logs um, which didn't behave that well as in our example. Um, one thing which actually um, leads to um, this, this clustering process is um, the similarity metrics chosen before the beginning to calculate the similarity metrics. So um, we are planning to implement um, also different uh, similarity measures um, that focus on other aspects. So at the moment we have implemented a percentage of communities. So um, it's more or less about the length of the process. We also have um, implemented the Lebenstein distance, um, which focuses more on the, the flow of the process. And um, if, you, if you are going to try the tool, um, the visualizations are completely different for both of those um, mm -hmm. metrics. Um, for the example we've had, um, which was not that clear, um, we had um, two intersections which were quite big and we tried to um, select um, smaller parts of them. Um, but if we selected the whole cluster, um, it definitely had led to spaghetti models. So this is something that we are working on. Okay, okay, super. Um, yeah, I was also wondering, so is a plan for the future to maybe allowed people to upload their own similarity measure or maybe a different process mining algorithm do you have these in the like for your for the future of your tool 
So um, from the current system design, we are not able to implement an upload of a similarity measure or um, uh, a process mining algorithm. Um, we are planning to extend the current set, which uh, currently features, I think, uh, two process mining or two process discovery algorithms and three similarity measures. We are planning to extend them um, to also experiment with another setting. So um, um, yes, we're gonna extend it, but um, the user would not be able to upload new measures or um, process discovery algorithms. Okay, okay, nice. Um, and maybe just one final one. Um, I was wondering, do you think it's uh, interesting? So you, you found those clusters and then you found these different process models for every cluster you have one. Do you think it's interesting to maybe try to find similarities between the, the learned process models? to see if the clusters somehow they have a common behavior or they are similar somehow, or you don't think this is um, something nice to do or that you can get some new insights? What do you think? This is something super interesting and we already have discussed this in our group. So um, one thing would be um, um, have a look at the similarity between the different clusters but also um, choose different similarity measures and then um, just um, have, a, have a look at the similarity of the generated clusters then. So um, there, there are lots of ideas that uh, came up after we have our first um, test of the tool and um, there, there is definitely a lot of interesting ideas coming up. But um, thank you for mentioning this. Uh, we definitely will, will have this on the table. So. Thank you. Okay, very nice. Thank you, Stefan, again. Any more questions for Stefan? Otherwise, I also have a question. I was, uh, I have two questions very quickly. One is, um, uh, because I mean, you use one specific family of algorithm to do the clustering. I was wondering, but, but there are also, I mean, there are many trace clustering uh, techniques that have been developed. Uh, some of them are pretty old actually. And I wonder how extensible is the tool? So how easy it would be to implement a different clustering technique? This goes along somehow the, uh, the question about um, extensibility that also catch just uh, asked about the similarity. So that's the first question. And the second one is whether you have any, so because you, um, so the, uh, you said the, the clustering traces is, is, uh, is relevant for process uh, uh, discovery, which is, which, which is absolutely true. But also, um, I think the clustering is very relevant for uh, uh, predictive monitoring. Because often, I mean, what we have to do is to cluster or, or to bucket the traces, uh, also to train a, a predictive model with, uh, with homogeneous data. So I was wondering whether you have any interest in uh, using your tool also in that area and, and uh, not only for the, the process uh, discovery. Thank you for your question. So um, having a look at other um, process clustering algorithms, um, from, from what I can see now, it would not be easy to, to implement these in our graphical approach. So everything we are doing is um, the, the similarity um, is calculated by different similarity measures, and this is then projected into the 2D surface. So um, from what I can see now, um, there is no no easy way to, to integrate um, um, common um, clustering approaches into this tool, but um, we also can have a look into it in the future. Maybe there are some ways to, to use this, this other cluster algorithms and um, their the clustering to visualize them in our 2D surface plane. Um, for the second question, um, most of the algorithms we have used are really computational heavy, so they take a long time. Uh, real-time monitoring um, would not be able to calculate 
the similarity of the processes in real time. So um, at the moment, um, we are running the system on a really big server um, with two server CPUs and it takes around, I think, um, two hours to do um, a complete clustering step from the similarity metrics to the TSNE plot. And um, this is something which is not suitable for uh, real time monitoring. And uh, from what I can see now, um, we aren't able to use these algorithms in any real time scenario. So um, this would be nice, but wouldn't work, sadly. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think, well, we are perfect with timing. I think we can, uh, unless there are any further questions, so. Or otherwise we can switch to the second speaker, Tobias. Yeah. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. share, share your screen and you can start. Yeah. Yeah, just to give you a short introduction into the topic, um, welcome to my presentation. It's a, yeah, it's a joint work of Kai Rushke, my colleague and me, Tobias Seifert. And today I'm going to present to you our yeah, enhanced version of BSID. Um, it's a tool to recommend compliant business processes based on process adaptions. And I've prepared um, two slides to introduce um, you into the topic before we have a look um, yeah, in our tool. So the scenario is the following. Um, we are in the field of business processes, compliance requirements, and IT components. And this is, of course, a very, very simple process uh, model, but it's I think it's enough to, um, to highlight the idea and the necessity of this tool. So you can see here a business process model. Um, it's an yeah, or, order to pay process. And this process is supported by um, three IT components, um, which yeah, it depends, or depends on another IT component. And on, on top of this uh, constructs, there are compliance requirements that are interrelated to each other. And that's a very, yeah, that's a necessary um, step to understand our approach. We also introduced, uh, we also introduced um, a so-called compliance process. So we said, okay, there are business processes and there are compliance processes which can be integrated into a business process. And the compliance process helps us to satisfy a certain compliance requirement. And this compliance process um, maybe also requires some IT to be executed. And that's, that's the case in our model. So the compliance process helps to yeah, satisfy our internal payments policy and it needs to be executed our ERP MM module. And now we can ask ourselves the questions, okay, what are, what are the, um, the results on compliance when we are going to remove, for example, this component or what compliance requirements must we take into account when we are going to replace um, this IT component or when we're going to replace, for example, this business activity. And in case of removing some elements, one possible solution is a compliance violation. So as you can imagine, when we are going to remove um, the ERPMM component, our compliance process can't be executed anymore, which leads to a compliance violation of the internal payments policy. And now that's, that's the new future, feature of our tool. We can propose compliant business processes. And the basic idea behind this is we say, okay, there is maybe there's more than one compliance process which satisfies a certain compliance requirement. For example, we, we 
just define some alternatives. These alternatives have to be defined manually um, because each each company or each organization has their own compliance requirements and has their own business processes. So the organization is um, is required to model these um, alternative compliance requirements. And if it's possible, our tool automatically proposes compliant business processes based on um, the previously modeled um, compliance processes. And now I want to go to our tool and yeah, just present a few steps. Um, So, okay, here we are on our tool and I will skip this step so we can import our compliance requirements, we can import our business models as PPMN models, or we, and we can import infrastructure models as um, Archimate um, IT models, and we can link um, these models together. Uh, this has to be done also manually. Um, and if we have done this, we can go to the analyze section and have a view on our process model. And you see our yeah, we see our small process model and can um, get the results on compliance. For example, when we want to replace um, an IT component, replacements can be. Um, yeah, replacing an IT component can uh, can mean we want to outsource this IT component. And if you want to outsource um, a certain IT component, we must know which requirements um, affects uh, these um, compliance, uh, these IT component. And here we see um, our tool analyzes the, um, the relations between our elements and say, okay, if we want to replace our ERP MM component, we have to take the following compliance requirements um, into account. Or we can say we want to remove um, this IT component, um, then our tool shows us, okay, if you are going to remove this IT component, you violate um, your internal policy payments and um, the compliance requirements on top of that. And now we can get recommendations for compliant business processes. And these recommendations are, as I already said, are based on previously modeled um, alternative compliance processes. And as we can see here, we see the original process, including the violation. And now we see one possible compliant business process. So the compliance process just changed. So now it's the um, compliance process manually check invoice. And another proposal for a compliant business process um, is, for example, to integrate another compliance process on another point in the process. And now the decision maker in the organization can decide um, which, which compliance or yeah, which compliance process um, can be used. So we think our tool can also be used to, yeah, to test the different scenarios or um, to see the effects on compliance when replacing or removing um, some elements. And the, the technical magic <laughs> um, behind this is an integrated graph I can show you. So, all our operations are done on, on this um, directed graph. And you can see there are different um, colors for each node. And this colors indicates, indicates that um, our algorithm distinguishes between different node types. So we have a node type um, for compliance requirements and we have a node type for IT components and we have also a node type for of course, business activities. And with, within this directed graph, um, we, we do some graph search techniques to, yeah, to get a result. And one, one last thing, you can also define additional alternative compliance processes um, by, by adding them to 
the respective compliance requirement. Yeah, and that's it from my side for a very, very short presentation. So any questions or hints or anything else from your side? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there, are there any questions? In the audience? Hi, I, I have one. Uh, okay, so thanks for, for the presentation and also the, the video. Um, I was wondering, so in the last, uh, before what you're showing right now in your screen before, you were showing two options as far as I understood. So the, for the decision maker, right? They have yeah. two alternatives there. Yeah this one and the, and the other. So I was just wondering, um, are they equal? Are there any quantitative measures that uh, one can think of that can also help um, the analyst to make a decision which one would be better or, or no? You think um, just the structure, it's, um, it's enough? Um, Thanks, thanks for your comment. Um, that's, yeah, that's a very important point, I think. And the current situation is it's only a structure, but you are completely right. Um, the next step is to consider um, some more information for the decision makers. So, for example, one possible um, viewpoint could be our the alternative compliance process is equal in points of efficiency or in points of costs or what are yeah what's how much how, how much time do we need to uh, to restructure our business process according for example to this proposal um, that are yeah that are of course things we have to take into account for for the next steps yeah, nice. Um, if I may also ask something else. Um, so I was also wondering, um, is your method sensitive to the number of requirements uh, that you, you have to check uh, or it doesn't really change much if you have more or less um, requirements? Um, I mean, the computation, no. computational uh, wise, uh, it is okay if you have uh, many requirements, uh, you're still able to provide uh, answers in a feasible time or, or, or no? That's a very good question. And um, to be honest, we haven't tested it. Um, we think it's a, yeah, it's a simple craft search problem. And of course, the search um, may take uh, a little bit longer um, in case we have more notes in our integrated graph. Um, but yeah, we haven't tested it because we thought um, that's yeah, that's not the fantastic thing of our of our prototype. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice. Thanks, Tobias. Yeah, thanks. Any more questions? I, I have a question. It's more a clarification because I I missed part of the beginning of the presentation, juggling between the two sessions, and I, I'm. Uh, what I missed was, I mean, how are the um, compliance requirements specified, and uh, what is the role exactly of the systems? Because the systems, like the ERP system, and so is something that normally, you know, yeah, that of course it's allowed in uh, BPMN, but that we often overlook when we consider process models. You know, it's it's all about control flow and so. Um, so if if you could 
can you clarify again these aspects yeah, for me? I, I, can, I can try. So the first question, how to, how to specify um, the compliance requirements? Um, that's a very good question for, for yeah, in practice. And the current situation is the following that we are able to import um, compliance requirements as um, XML files, and it just is simply looks like that. So we have, yeah, we have a source, and we have also a title of our compliance requirement, and we have a, a textual description of our compliance requirement, and that's it. And of course, um, some domain expert now is required to. Um, link the compliance requirements to either our business activities or IT components. Okay, okay, I see, I see. And the role of our IT components, um, let me go back to our slides. Um, the idea to, to define um, a different standard to model IT components in our BPMM model was, of, of course, we can model IT components in BPMM, um, but we can only model one layer. So the point is that an IT architecture is much more complex than this three IT components. And in order to model these dependencies, um, we decided to introduce <laughs> this rect angel notation to, to show that the IT architecture is, is um, much more and there are much more dependencies than just the dependencies between one IT component and one flow element of the business process. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, now, yeah, thank you. Now it's, it's, uh, it's much clearer. Do we have any more questions? From the audience, it seems like mm, no. Then uh, this concludes the this first part, because in this session, we only have two demos. So there's a, there's a break now. You're free to move to other uh, sessions to to take a look at other demos. And here we will start again in uh, 23 minutes from now, which means, uh, what time is now in Spain? I, uh, it, it means at uh, 2.45, am I right? Yeah, 2.45, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no. then uh, see you soon here, okay?
Okay, so it's, uh, it's almost time to restart this session. So, yeah, as advertised, uh, we have two demos in uh, these sessions. They have already been uh, pre uh, presented once, uh, starting one hour ago, and uh, we will start again with a, a new round now. Uh, the uh, the first demo that will be uh, presented is uh, uh, the the first demo is about the process clustering. So in interactive process clustering with T TSME presented by Stefan, who I can see uh, already uh, ready. And the second one is a tool to recommend compliant business processes based on the process adoption that will be presented by Tobias, who is also here ready uh, to go. So I think we are ready. Uh, so, Stefan, you can start. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So I'm going to show the screen. There we go. Okay, welcome everybody to the second session on interactive process clustering with TES and E. My name is Stefan Schumann and I'm a researcher at the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. And today I'm going to present work which was done together with Jan Hadda Bekarese, Sebastian Baumann and Peter Fettke. We have developed a tool um, which mainly aims at process analysts and process specialists without deeper data science knowledge to provide them with the ability to do process clustering in an interactive and visual manner. First, I'm going to talk about the motivation behind our tool and idea. Then I go on over the demonstration unit, the clustering process, as well as the user interface, and then one to give a short conclusion. So why do um, process clustering at all? If you are um, executing process discovery algorithms on real life event logs, they are often called so-called spaghetti models, which are caused by um, a lot of deviations and variations in the executed processes. Um, process clustering is one method to um, divide such event logs into smaller parts with similar models or event traces, where we can then um, generate easier event logs, which are um, better interpretable and um, assemble the, the event log. And we wanted to provide process analysts and process specialists with an easy to use tool for a, such a clustering process. Um, it should feature an interactive, interactive grouping of such traces. And um, it also should integrate um, process discovery algorithms. So we have set up an end-to-end -end pipeline from uh, the clustering process to the visualization of the, the generated process models. Having our users in mind, we have defined some characteristics which the, tier, the tool needs uh, to fit um, to be easy to, to be usable for the specific um, target audience. It should be easy to access, so the users don't need to deal with any complex installations or service software. It um, should provide a simple to use graphical interface. For example, you can see on the right side our file upload dialog, which only features really the upload dialog without any over complex options. It should combine um, the clustering with process mining techniques. So um, to build an end to end pipeline and the user can see um, what they've generated in one tool without swi switching any tool. And it also should feature an evaluation method um, to um, um, show the quality of the generated process model collection if they fit the um, process models very well. Before we are going uh, to talk about the clustering process, I want to give a short introduction on TES and E, what is a popular method to explore high dimensional data in lower dimension, and it is used in a variety of different sciences now, but um, didn't get so much attention in the BPM community yet. We are using this to represent a high dimensional similarity matrix into a two dimensional projection, which is um, understandable in an easy way and also interactive. Um, we use it to, um, uh, to project um, dissimilarity vectors um, to the surface and um, 
um, vectors which are same in the high dimensional similarity metrics are close together in this projection. So you can see here in the right hand side, it's a screenshot of O2. Um, processes which are close together here in this projection are um, quite similar and you can then select the different parts and generate process models. So our clustering process is divided into five steps. Um, first, the user needs to upload a pr process log. Here we support XS format, so the user doesn't need to do any mapping of some fields or columns um, from the log itself, so we get everything completely out of the log and do the mapping with the tool. Then a trace similarity matrix is generated. Here we provide um, different similarity measures <clears throat> which affect the, the clustering outcome in the end. Maybe we can discuss something about this later in the discussion. Um, then we use T is an E to um, project this generated trace similarity matrix into a 2D scatter plot. The last two steps are the interactive steps for the user. Um, the user can then visually select parts of the um, generated process or the teasing result and um, build um, process models which reassembles the, the event log. Uh, finally, the user is able to evaluate the quality of the generated process models. Here you can see um, the graphical interface of our demonstration unit. On the right hand side, you see the similarity matrix, um, which is used to evaluate the quality. Uh, red square means um, the processes have a high similarity to each other, and it might make sense to combine these because um, it would not add too much complexity to the generated model, but um, you um, can reassemble the event log without too many different models. In the middle, you can see the T-SNE scatter plot. This is interactive and you can select um, specific parts of the, the generated clusters. In this example, the red cluster is highlighted. The other ones are a bit more translucent. So you really can select, click, and then apply a process mining algorithm. This is done from the left-hand side where we add different options to our tool. Um, applying the process mining algorithm, also um, generating the similarity matrix. We've also implemented a cluster guidance component, which does a pre-selected clustering of the generated T's and E result. On the bottom, you can see the process table where all generated process models are then listed. You have the ability to view the generated process models from this table by clicking on show model. This, for example, is the view of one of our generated process models. At the moment, this view is just an image view without the ability to scale anything. Um, but we plan to implement um, also some, some interaction features to this. So um, the user is able to um, have a better look at the generated process models then. To conclude, um, we have built a demonstration system to evaluate the usability of T's and E for process clustering. Um, we have set up an end-to-end -end pipeline from clustering to mining process models, so the user doesn't have to switch. And uh, we have already evaluated our tool in our department and get an overall positive evaluation, but we still need to uh, evaluate our tool and idea um, with our target audience group. So um, this is maybe not representative, but um, we are looking forward to do this with the target audience group. Thank you. If you would like to test our demonstration unit, you can scan the QR code on the right hand side. If you have any questions or are open for discussion, um, just start. Um, if there's anything else, you can send me an email. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? No, you can just uh, unmute yourself and ask and ask anything. Anybody? Any?
All right, then in that case, I just want to remark that I had a look at the tool. So at the website is a web-based application and it's, I must say, it's very, very easy to use. So if you haven't checked it out, you could do it and it's a very interesting tool. Um, thank you, Stefan. And uh, uh, maybe we, we can wait a few minutes uh, because the next on the schedule the next demo is uh, in about 10 minutes so and uh, we should wait because maybe maybe others may join after other demos in other rooms so in in the meantime if you have any questions for uh, regarding this demo that was just shown you know i feel free to interject okay and, and otherwise, let's wait for about 10 minutes and then we can do the next demo.
All right, so we we are back for the last uh, demo of this session, and this will be uh, Tobias with yeah. the tool for uh, suggesting compliance process uh, processes. So I think Tobias, you can start as soon as you're ready. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, hello and welcome to the last session. Um, my name is Tobias and today I'm going to present to you our enhanced prototype called BSET. And first of all, I want to yeah, quickly introduce you to the problem on three slides and then I will show you our prototype and then I'm, yeah, I'm open for your questions and suggestions. So we are in the domain of um, compliance and business processes and IT architectures. And as we all know, compliance requirements um, can affect both business processes and IT architectures. And to illustrate this, I've just, um, yeah, bring a little example with me. So here we see a very, very simple model, but it's, I think it's it's suitable to show our to show our uh, methods and to demonstrate our prototype. So here we see a very simple purchase to pay process modeled as BPMN, and on top of our business process, we have some compliance requirements that are also interrelated to each other, and our business process is supported by by IT. And as we all know, IT consists of various components or IT components. So in a very, very simple way, there is, there is some hardware which runs um, any kind of software. And to illustrate um, these dependencies between IT components, we decided to, to introduce a new <laughs> modeling notation for IT components um, in in BPMN models, just to illustrate our problem. And we also have introduced a fragment concept. Um, we call this concept a compliance process. So this gray BPMN sub-process is a compliance process with, uh, which helps to satisfy our compliance requirement. And in this scenario, now we can ask ourselves what our the effects on compliance when we are going to, um, for example, remove this IT component or what compliance requirements must we consider when we replace, for example, um, this business activity. And these questions um, yeah, are answered by our software prototype. And one possible answer is, okay, when you are going to remove this IT component, then of course we are unable to execute our compliance process, which leads to a compliance violation. And in terms of a compliance violation, our tool proposes also or recommends compliant business processes. And the basic idea behind this is um, we, we just model more than one compliance process to each compliance requirement. So there are alternative compliance processes um, that have different properties. And this compliance processes has to be modeled by each organization on their own because each organization has um, different business processes and must um, consider different compliance requirements. So in turn, the organization is also, um, is also um, asked to model their own alternative compliance processes. And based on this alternative graph, um, our tool proposes compliant business processes. And now we can have a look in our tool. So I just prepared um, a, a little demo project and 
the first thing that the user has to do is um, they have to to link um, the imported models. So we can import a business process as a BPMN model. We can import an IT architecture as an Archimate model. And we can import um, compliance requirements as an XML file. And in first step, the organization has to, um, to link with these models together. And we can go to the last step, to the analyze part and can go in our process model. And we can, for example, just um, see the results um, when we are going to, well, we want to replace our um, ERP system. So our tool um, shows us which compliance requirements are taken to uh, our which compliance requirements must be taken into account when replacing this um, IT component. And here you see our compliance requirements. And now um, the tool can also be used for uh, testing different scenarios. So the decision maker can see very quickly um, what are the compliance requirements that has to be taken into account. And for example, replacing um, this IT component and also um, we can get recommendations for compliant business processes in case of a compliance violation. So a compliance violation occurs in this example when we um, remove this IT component and first of all um, our tool shows the results. So when we are going to remove the IT component, um, the following two compliance requirements are violated and um, these re compliance requirements became obsolete. And now we can get recommendations for compliant business processes from our tool. And <coughs> as I already said, based on previously modeled compliance processes, our tool proposes recommendations for compliant business processes. And first of all, here we see again the violated, um, yeah, the non compliant business process. And now we can see the first recommendation. So our tool um, replaces the compliance process. So it's, it's another compliance process. Um, or we can get another recommendation. So it's, it's also another compliance process that requires a different IT component to be executed. And it's on, yeah, it's, it's, it's on a different place in, in our business process. And currently these are only yeah, some, some structural recommendations. So the next step would be to, um, to enhance the recommendation by some quantitative um, attributes. For example, it's um, yeah, a possible solution is to think about, okay, um, what are the differences between these two recommendations? So is one compliance process more efficient or cost-effective, uh, more cost-effective than the other one? Um, this, these are so possible further directions to of course, enhance um, the, the impact or the, yeah, the ease, the ease of use to, um, to the decision maker. And just for the short, um, for the last thing, um, all our algorithms are, um, or our algorithms um, based on a graph search. So the model behind this is a directed graph. Um, and in this directed graph, we distinguish um, different node types. So we have a node type, for example, for our business activities, and we have a node type for IT components, and we have a node type for uh, compliance requirements. And all um, analyzes we, we do are done on this directed graph. Um, yeah, it, 
that's it from my side. Are there any questions? Thank you, Tobias. Are there any questions? So if you want to ask a question, you can just do it. Just unmute yourself and ask. Since there are no further questions, in in this case, I I think that's the end of this session. And I, to be as a Stefan, I have to thank Alfonso for uh, hosting this. And uh, I think you still have time to catch one last demo in. Uh, a different room. I think rooms one, two, and three have uh, three demos per room. So there, one is still going. Okay. Thank you very much. And this closes this this session. Okay. All right.